What up, you guys? Uh, so, man, there's a designer of this world, huh? A lot of people actually don't believe in God. People are unbelievers, atheists. Um, they don't believe. They believe the lie that Satan puts in their mind. The Big Bang. So, apparently the Big Bang created people, created the world, created emotions, love, hate. Absolutely not. The Big Bang. What, I, um, can't create life? What? How was every, how did the Big Bang create everybody? You know? Um, does the Big Bang grant miracles? No. So, how? Well, God exists. Um, and a lot of people actually don't believe that God is the creator of life. <laughs> Because they don't believe in God at all. Excuse me. Um, but literally, the only book in this world that has all the truth in it, all the answers that we need for life, death, what happens after death, how to get saved and live in heaven for all eternity... How to escape burning in hellfire for all eternity is the Holy Bible. So, people don't believe it's a real thing. They don't, they don't, they just believe it's just a book. You know, they just believe it's the world's best selling book. Um, well, that's definitely obviously not true. Because it's not just a book, it's, there's actually people made up, uh, they, uh, they actually made up a thing that the Bible stands for. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Obviously that's not true. Bible is Greek, I think, for book. Um... Basic instructions before leaving earth. There's only one instruction that we have to do in order to get saved. Repent, having a heart, a change of heart of sin, and turn, to turn away from our sins and confess our sins to God. And he is um, faithful and just and will forgive us of our unrighteousness, purify us from all unrighteousness, and then placing our faith in Lord Jesus Christ's sacrifice for our sins. Once the only way to get saved is faith alone in Christ. All who, Romans ten nine. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe it in your heart that God rose him from the dead three days later, you shall be saved. You shall be not, um, not that you w might be. You shall be saved. You shall be. Um. And a lot of people have their own ways of how to get saved. When it's plainly written in the Bible as it states of how to get saved. What do we need to do to be saved? What must we do to be saved? Believe in the name of the Son of God. Believing in the name of the Son of God is believing that he died for your, your sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day. ABCs of salvation. Admit, humbly get on your get on your knees and humbly admit to Lord Jesus Christ out loud that you're a sinner, and there's nothing you can ever do to save yourself. And then, completely wholeheartedly believe. Say that you be, I believe in your sacrifice, death, and burial and resurrection um, for my sins, Lord Jesus Christ. Come into my life. I invite you into my heart. I invite you to come live inside of my soul. Change me. 
fill me with your Holy Spirit and save me from hell forever and, to, and take me home to heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for saving me, for making me a child of God, for making me born again. In your precious name I pray, amen. That is the only way to get saved. Ro the book of Romans, there's not one good, no, not one. All of our righteousness is as filthy rags compared to God's standard of perfection. When we place our trust and faith in Jesus' sacrifice for what he's already done at Calvary 2,000 years ago, God the Father con considers our own trust uh, and faith in his Son as his own righteousness. He takes and cleanses our souls, purifies us from all unrighteousness, all sin. So when we sin, we're not held accountable for it anymore. We're not guilty of sin because we already pay, got all of our sins are already paid for. So we're saved. Once saved, always saved. Because if once saved, always saved was not true, then we would, in fact, still be accountable for our sins. We would still be guilty of our sins. And then on Judgment Day, God would be like, oh, no, you're guilty of sin. You're, of course I saved you. My son lives in you, but you're still guilty of sin. So you're going to hell with my son. Even though you have the Holy Spirit in you, you're going to go to hell as a born-again Christian, a child of God, with the Holy Spirit inside of you. That does not make any sense. Hell is only for the people who have never received the only way to be forgiven of their sins. Placing their faith in Lord Jesus Christ, what he's done for us at Calvary 2,000 years ago. We can't take God to hell with us because hell is forever closed for God and for true born-again Christians because God lives in us. We have eternal life. Eternal life as true born-again Christians is Jesus Christ in us. Jesus Christ himself is eternal life. He's the word of God. Jesus Christ is the Bible. He's the true living God and the Son of God. He's the true word of God. The Word of God, the Bible, the book, is Jesus Christ himself. So, um, think about that for a second, right? How can you go to hell if, you, if God lives inside of you, if you're a born-again child of God, right? And, um, and obviously God is not a sinner. He's never been a sinner. He's always been perfect for eternity in the past, present, and eternity in the future. Um, so, yeah, I mean, hell is closed for God. Always has been. Always will be. So, our soul, we're perfect beings in our souls after we are born again and became children of God. We're not infected with sin in our soul anymore because Jesus Christ cleansed us with his spirit, his blood. He's inside of us. He's in our souls, in our hearts. So we're perfect. We're righteous as God. We're as righteous and perfect as and holy as God in our souls because of Jesus Christ. So when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, believing in his sacrifice, our lives no longer matter. Our life, we're not account, accountable for how we live anymore. We're not accountable um, for sin. We're not guilty of sin. We received eternal life. Our lives are as... Uh, we, it's not what we do in our life, but what Jesus Christ did in his life when he lived on earth. When we have him in us, when we receive him, invite him to our hearts, he puts his own life, how he lived, inside of us. All right? So he lived a perfect, holy, sinless life. And we, we uh, inherit that life because he lives in us. So when he lives inside of us, it's his life that comes in us because he is eternal. It's eternal life. Only eter Eternal life only comes through Jesus Christ. Nobody else. You can't just go up to a person and say, hey, can you grant me eternal life? You can't, a, a trillionaire in the world can't be like, oh, I'm going to buy, I'm going to give this amount of money to God for salvation. You can't buy salvation. You can't earn salvation. You cannot lose salvation once you obtain it. Once you decide to make the choice to go to heaven forever, you are away from hell for all eternity. You are um, no longer able to go to hell 
which is only for unbelievers. Because you have eternal life. You have the Son of God in you. You have the Holy Spirit in you. When you sin, you're not guilty of it anymore. You're not accountable of it anymore. Because of Jesus' blood. Jesus Christ cleansed heaven after Satan and his demons sinned. He sin um he's when Satan sinned and his demons sinned in heaven, heaven was corrupt with sin, right? Well, guess what? Jesus Christ used his own blood in heaven to purify heaven and make it perfect again. So if he did that to, with an endless place, heaven is endless. There's no end to it. You can walk around, you can walk um, to the other side of heaven and you'll never ever get there for all eternity. It's endless. Um, then, then how is his blood not powerful enough to cleanse us from sin for all eternity? Right? Indeed, and exactly, indeed. Well, you're probably wondering, well, then why can't Satan get saved? Well, Satan's already spirit, spirit being. Um, he's, he was never human, so it, salvation is only for humans. Um, and Jesus Christ did not die for the angels that sinned. He only died for humanity, for our sins as humans. So the first time Satan sinned, he was already do, uh, he was already fated for the lake of fire for all eternity. The first time demons sinned, they were already um, doomed for hell, forever. Can Satan repent and be forgiven? Absolutely not. I have a video of that, by the way, and I explain why he hates God with an everlasting hatred, and so does Satan's demons. Um, in fact, Satan hates himself and his followers as well. He's even to this day, he's manipulating his followers and brainwashing them into falling. He's the one, remember, the devil is the one who caused all the other angels to fall. He tempted them. So, yeah, he's still, he's still, um, betraying his demons as of today. Um, but Satan does not want to be forgiven. He does not want to repent. A, that's impossible. It, but even if it was possible, Satan would still choose to be burning in the lake of fire for all eternity than go to heaven to be with God. Because Satan hates God so, so, so badly. And the only, um, the only creatures that Satan wants to be with in hell is the demons and all human and all the humans because he hates everything he hates all of god's creation and god's the creator of all things so he hates everything everyone including himself because obviously he knows that he's he was created by god um so yeah if satan could repent and be forgiven and then be saved blah 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 which is absolutely absurdly absurdly impossible then no he would not because unfortunately he still doesn't want to be with God for all eternity. He doesn't want to be with God forever. He hates God, which is, how can somebody hate God? How can somebody not want to be in heaven with God? In his, in God's, we're going to be in heaven as in God's full 100% glory. Face to face with God the Father. In his complete holy glory for all eternity every second for all of eternity how can anybody and the feeling of the peace and the glory and the holiness of god the only way i could describe it is the indescribable peace it's the feeling of the, when the holy spirit went inside of us when we received the holy spirit you felt the holy spirit go into you fly uh, fly down into you that peace the overwhelming peace and knowledge and the love you felt that was otherworldly is um is what it's going to be like in heaven for all eternity the only difference is that feeling is going to be unimaginably more than we felt when the holy spirit came into us once we're in heaven because if we could feel the whole magnitude of that peace and that love and that holiness and that glory, we would die. 
because our bodies, our fleshly bodies cannot handle the, all that glory. So, but in heaven, we're immortal because we have eternal life. And so our glorified bodies will be able to withstand that, all that glory. That's why the Bible says, nobody can see my face and yet live. It's talking about the Father God, not Jesus Christ, even though Jesus Christ is God and the Son of God, because people have actually seen Jesus, Jesus' real face. Colton Burpo from Heaven is for Real, a Cayenne who actually painted Jesus, which is how the real picture of Jesus actually became, actually came into the world. You can look it up, uh, a Cayenne, a Cayenne um, Jesus painting. Uh, he has a beard, but he has short hair, you know? He doesn't have the long hair that comes down to his shoulders. Um, so it, that's, it's a little different. He's a little different looking than we uh, expected. Um, he does have the holes in his hands and his feet. Um, scars do close up, but he chose to have his scars not close up. He can if he wants to, obviously, because he's God. He can do anything. But he um, he likes to have his holes in his hands and his, his feet um, open to remind himself his of his love for us, which is really awesome, actually. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I know it's kind of long, but all my videos are worth it because it, I talk about God and stuff like that and the, the things that please God, you know, all my videos bring glory to God. I take no credit for them. All, all glory and credit goes to God because he's speaking through me in all of my videos. The Holy Spirit's leading me of what to say in all of my videos, um, tells me and gives me ideals of what to make, what videos to make. Um, and so, yeah, it's almost like God himself is speaking through me to you. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and talk to you later. Peace.